Let's talk about the votes first and then back up into the forum, in the issues forum, if you don't mind. Okay. For reason being, first off, most of the votes were in favor. I think we only had a handful that went against um, the idea. I, I don't know if that's status quo or not. Um, some went right through. I, I Actually, there was one. I don't remember what it was. It might have been the letter of intent. I thought for a moment it wasn't even going to get um, motioned, which would have been fascinating. If it hadn't <laughs> even been motioned or second, it wouldn't have even been voted on. I did get a chuckle out of there. I kind of hesitated at one point going, oh, my gosh, is no one going to even motion this thing? Um, but for the most part, every thing went through. I'm not going to go through every single one of them with you, but right. uh, I guess let me start with this. Were there any that jumped out at you that you were either surprised by the vote or at least um, – at least jumped out at you as being one of those that you had kind of your finger on that you wanted to see how it would go? Well, I was really interested in, in uh, I would say, probably three proposals or four proposals. The, the one about whether or not we would permit um, an on-campus evaluation for prospective student athletes. I didn't think that proposal would pass, um, but I was interested to see the extent to which folks might embrace it. As you know, that came out of the uh, work of the recruiting working group and it was designed as one of, of several suggested ways in which um, coaches could be allowed to spend more time on campus and less time off campus but ultimately I think that uh, that was defeated um, for two reasons one folks didn't necessarily believe that ultimately it would um, save coaches that much time uh, and number two the student athletes uh, especially the student athlete advisory committee um, felt that it might uh, put student athletes in an inappropriate uh, position in that it might make athletics a higher consideration than academics at admissions um, during the recruitment process. And that, that was a concern for them. And I think that was a concern that was shared by, by folks, uh, several folks in our membership. Um, so that was one proposal I thought I, was very interesting. The, the second proposal of note would be the proposal that would have reduced by 10% across the board contest limits in most sports with the notable exemption of football and, and cross country. Um, ultimately, that proposal was referred back to the governance structure so that we as the governance structure can conduct a comprehensive review of our playing and practice season uh, legislation. Our playing and practice season rules by and large are about uh, 10 years old and this will probably, this will represent our first First comprehensive review of our playing and practice season rules. Yeah, we'll talk about contest limits, but we'll also have a, have a chance to talk about contest exemptions, uh, the non-traditional segment, the overall length of the playing season, um, what we permit and what we don't permit in a broader based and more deliberative way. Um, we'll certainly engage uh, lots of constituents, including SAC, coaches associations, those kinds of folks. Um, we're not on a fast timetable. We hope to come back with models at next year's convention. We wouldn't be voting on anything if we vote on anything at all until the 2017 convention. So I think it's time for a comprehensive review. Um, I think uh, folks are open to new ideas. It doesn't mean we'll end up necessarily changing anything, but it's probably time for, for that kind of uh, for that kind of discussion. Um, I also felt like the football practice proposal was going to be uh, a very important uh, proposal. Um, I wasn't disappointed by the closeness of the vote. Uh, it, it did reflect the fact that it was a controversial issue. Um, ultimately. It seemed that the membership was not quite ready to go forward with a, a, a full, comprehensive um, spring uh, football um, practice model that included contact. But um, that's probably the largest uh, vote in favor of that kind of concept that we've had in a while. And I thought that was significant. So when you think about the proposal I just mentioned, the comprehensive playing and practice season review, certainly there'll be a place in that discussion for football, both the regular season and, and what might happen during the non-traditional spring segment. Let's start with football. We'll circle back on some of the others with football. A lot of the football certainly was the focus of the football side of things. A lot of football coaches spoke up in favor of it. Though interesting enough, some football schools also spoke up against it. They right. all had different variations of, of the same theme. It was either going to be a stress on resources, especially athletic trainers or those who take care of facilities. It could be a stress on student athletes. The idea that student athletes would have to focus on football instead of maybe doing something else that was 
kind of one of those maybe underlying themes I kept hearing. Yep. And the other one was certainly injuries. Uh, asked the chief medical officer uh, for the NCAA to step forward and talk about that. I thought he did a pretty good job of just giving the facts and staying down the middle and not giving his opinion necessarily on what was the right or wrong decision. But certainly all of those combined made it for a difficult conversation and especially made it difficult because the coaches are saying, hey, let us teach the right techniques by having this spring practice. But I thought the one thing that maybe was just underneath the surface and maybe is something that people need to think about is while coaches were screaming discrimination that these football players are the only ones with non-traditional seasons, I got the feeling and the sensation that non-traditional seasons are going to take a really get a really strong look at. And maybe non-traditional seasons for other sports may have their glory days over in this practices and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Practices and 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 games study could reveal that as well. I think uh, two items to note along those lines. So uh, the idea that that we will benefit from a review of where we're at with the non-traditional season um, as part of this more comprehensive review. I, I would concur with that thought. Uh, keep in mind that we did talk about the non-traditional segment during the forum on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, we were prepared to, to ask a series of questions about possible changes to the non-traditional segment that the delegates might want to uh, identify. But interestingly enough, we never got past the first question, which was, <laughs> do you favor uh, our, uh, potential changes in the non-traditional segment? And a majority of the delegates said, said no, they didn't. Um, so we didn't have a chance to go further and talk about you know, the spring versus the fall non-traditional segment right. in different sports and different uh, combinations of conditioning and strength and, and eliminating the contest, but, but keeping, um, keeping the, uh, the workouts or um, allowing more uh, player uh, coach time as a, as a substitute for the current model. We have all kinds of models that our playing and practice season uh, subcommittee has identified. Uh, we never really get a chance to delve into those in more detail during the forum, um, but I suspect that those may come up for additional discussion as part of this more comprehensive review. What do you say to those in the football who feel they're being discriminated against with not being able to have a non-traditional season? Their point being they're the only fall or spring sport. We won't point out the fact that the winter sports don't have them either, but the fact that they're the only fall or, or spring sport without one. Is it is it more complicated than that? Or is, does it boil down to just simply that? I would say um, it's probably oversimplification to say that they, football doesn't have a non-traditional segment because they do. They have a strength and conditioning uh, period right now that permits teams to get together, permits interaction with coaches, um, permits uh, hand shields, um, permits uh, folks to, to use a football. So we're not starting from nothing. Um, we're starting from status quo and talking about possible enhancements. Once you start talking about adding contact, I think that's a really fundamental change change. And I'm not arguing against it or for it, but it seemed that the, the recommendation to include contact, um, that really, I think, begins to ask questions about um, proper facilities, uh, proper uh, support, uh, especially from training staff. It begins to add another layer of complication that doesn't exist um, in, the, uh, in the current model. Um, and so that's where I think uh, things um, were f would be fundamentally changed by the model that was proposed. And again, I'm not arguing for or against it. It's very interesting, too, that many uh, coaches were arguing that those who would normally abstain because they don't have football take right. part in the vote. <coughs> I would say it was probably 50-50 on that. Some abstained, some did not. Um, but the vote was very close. It got back, it got up for a re-vote. Um, and that revote was even closer, as some did not abstain. Is this something that is just going to need some time to massage the right way of doing it? 
Yeah, I, it's something that could benefit from uh, that could benefit from additional discussion. I mean, to, I want to give the football community a lot of credit in the in the following sense. Um, more or less, they were told uh, rather than coming back every few years with additional minor incremental changes, whether it be you know the um, the, the, the hand shields or the football or or the the tweaks that that we've seen over the years. Yeah. Um, it was suggested, hey, come back and, and, and give us a comprehensive proposal that shows what you'd really like. And we'll vote it up or we'll vote it down. Um, and I want to give them credit for coming back with, with what I thought was a very responsive model to that charge. Um, it wasn't adopted, but that doesn't mean that the propo- that, that the concept's necessarily going away. I think that the closest of the vote um, reflects that fact. And, you know, one, one other point, interestingly enough, on reconsideration, I think you hit it exactly on the head. Um, ultimately, on the, the, the second second vote that uh, defeated reconsideration. Uh, the first vote, I think, was like a like a 10 vote margin, but the second vote was like a 12 vote margin or they're very close. Yeah. But it, it, it were fewer folks that abstained second time around. And, you know, some of that could have been a function of it was getting late in the morning and, and folks uh, felt like the debate had uh, gone on long enough. So t- timing can be very important um, related to the voting on issues during a business session that may have played a factor. 